All right, it's time to put in the framing for the second floor. And you can see the brown is my bond that I just put in in the last uh, demonstration for the rim joist. And now my question is, which direction am I going to frame? And what would be the structural members? So I'm thinking originally, I thought, okay, I will just frame this way, two by tens, because I've got two by 10 cavity in there right now. And I'll just go to here. And normally we would put a header right here, um, or that would be a bearing wall all the way across. And then continue the framing on top of there. But when I show you my elevation looking in this direction, you'll see that I don't have space for a header. So I, so I thought, okay, let's do this. Let's frame in this direction. I will use two by 12s. I can raise the floor a couple of inches. It's Revit. All of my levels will raise up automatically and everything that is assigned to those levels will change. So it's not a big deal. And I could use two by 12s because I, I can span this distance. It's a little, it's like 19 feet something to this wall and I could cantilever to there. So I can do this. But either way, I still have this problem of how to carry this balcony because I don't have anything <laughs> to frame to, to cantilever. Um, think out loud here for a second if I yeah I would I still have that problem if I if I I don't have any bearing over here so what I was thinking is I frame in this direction and just come back that's fine for this side of the joist but I don't have anything carry this side because remember there's no support here and you'll see that when i share the section um, so i guess the best way to do this is as i've left the cavity two by ten that makes the most amount of sense plus it's the least expensive we can span this way with two by tens to the bond, but I'm going to span to this um, area. I will have a, I will continue that bond all the way down like that. And the only thing that I can do to make that work, I guess, is have a moment connection that resists and allows that to cantilever that way with a moment connection at the bond. So that, that seems like that's what's going to work. So now I change my share screen. Okay, I think you can see that. So this is looking at that cantilever section here. Uh, that's this section right here that I'm trying to cantilever, but I don't have anything to cantilever from because my arch below springs at six foot 10. I don't want to come down any or much lower than that. And I need, I would need to have some sort of structural member here. And that would mean I'd have to bring that arch all the way down so that this, these points would be bad. So I'll have to do the moment connection. So I don't have, this is the floor level. And in order to cantilever these as the floor joist, I need to have a beam underneath it. And I don't have any room for that beam underneath there because that's where the arch is. And that's not gonna work. So let's see if, 
to make sense out of that, uh, let's see, BG, uh, turn my visibility graphics on and turn my walls back on. And let's just see if that makes sense to you. Now. Okay. And so I'll go to the front elevation. And then I have my section box. Drag this guy out first. There's my front elevation, but I don't want my section box to be outside of the house. I'll drag it in here and then go back and we'll look at it in 3D. And I think that that'll make more sense. Let's do it the other way though. Let's do it over here. Maybe pull this guy down a little bit. And now I think that it, what I'm ex expressing is probably a little bit more visible here because here's the arch. See the arch there? So the arch goes right up. Well, I would need to have a header underneath here in order for this to cantilever. So that's a problem. That's not going to work for me. So let's uh, go back to my second floor and I'll put my structural system in. So really we're gonna have a bond that comes all the way down. I can draw it in pieces. I'll just bring it down to here. That's going to be the bond. Zoom in a little closer. We'll bring the bond all the way down to there. It's really just you know, coming across. I don't know how this is going to work, but it's not going. These pieces are stopping at the bond, and they're not going to go in any farther than that. So this guy will come back. This is going to be it. I mean, I can write it, note it as a structural a moment connection, but I think the structural engineer is going to have to deal with this one. All right, so the purpose of this demonstration was really to put in the structural system. So I'm going to put the two by tens across this way at 16 inches on center. So we go up to the structure tab and then we say beam system. And in my properties, I'm looking for what my beam type is, and it's a two by 10, and my spacing is uh, one foot, uh, four inches or 16 inches. So I have the correct uh, setup. I need to sketch it and I'll use a rectangle. And I don't wanna go any farther than the gypsum board of that wall. So I've I need to modify, oh geez, I forgot I have this. I need to do some modification anyway. So, all right. So sometimes that rectangle is easy to use and sometimes it just doesn't solve. And I forgot that I had uh, some other issues here. So I will right, we'll come down to here. I'm just divining the outline of the structural system right now. It'll come all the way across to here. And then it will go back up to, i just draw right there. And I hit the escape, escape, and I'll click on that magenta line, which I didn't need to put in. Uh, and I will use my trim extend. So there's my magenta line and I'm stopping it here, except I wanna stop it at the gypsum board. So I'm gonna, I'm going to move that. I, I can't see my gypsum board below, but I believe it's five eighths of an inch back from where it's being, where that wall is right now. So five eighths of an inch. And I think that's really where, I, I don't wanna go any farther because this wall is going to support the two by 10 that span in this direction. And I might double up my, or triple up my two by 10s here so that it'll be a beam that spans from this point to this point to this point and across to here which means that, that's going to be an issue too. Maybe I should take, I probably should take this bond all the way over and rest it on that. And that makes sense. All right, well, this, let's do one thing at a time. That's 
unnecessary. No, oh, I guess I could have, I could have used the uh, fill it command to clean that up, but I think we have it now. So now I'm looking, the next thing I'm looking for before I say okay is which way are my floor joists spanning? And the double line here shows that it's spanning from side to side. So that's okay. Then I'll look at my uh, constraints, my properties, and it's the second floor is the reference level, and my floor joists are going in three quarters of an inch below that. So I think we're in good shape. I'm going to say okay, and we'll find out. There we go. There's my two by tens coming across like that. And let's go look at our 3D view. And I'm going to type VG, visibility graphics, and turn the walls off. I just wanted to show my structural problem there with the arch. And there we go with that. And now if I turn this floor off for just a second, uh, we can see through it. Tab, there it is. Um, whoops, you still got the escape, escape. I wanted to grab the floor, not the floor joist. Okay, so there. I'll still hide that so that it's more clear. Whoops, right click, hide in view. Mm, should I do this one? I'll hide it. Yeah, I think I'm going to use this. Uh, Although there might be other things that'll, when I reset, oh, there's nothing here. Okay, so hide element. Okay, so there's my framing. That's what I wanted to show. Now, this is the issue here. How do we carry this floor? I can't cantilever um, because there's no support below here. So that's a problem for the structural engineer. All right, so anyway, Revit put that in there real quickly for me. That's very nice. Go back to the second floor. And I said I wanted to expand this guy so that he rests on this wall below. So let's drag him over to there. Uh, it won't go, it'll go back five eighths of an inch because that's the thick, it'll rest on the um, gypsum board, uh, rather on the two by four that's down there not the gypsum board. So I don't think I can offset that. So I'll just architecture reference plane. And I'm going to say 5 eighths of an inch. And come down here. It's on the wrong side. So I hit the space bar. There we go. And now I have something that I can pull my 2 by 10 into. And I know that one two by 10 is not gonna be enough. Two might not be enough, but three definitely will. So I'm going to copy from here to here. And I'm gonna do another one. Now the engineer, when the structural engineer, when he looks at that or she, or they uh, look at that, they'll determine how many I actually need there. Oops, let's get over here and see yeah, everything looks good. This bond can't go that far anymore. It's going to have to stop here. Now, the reason I'm extending these is simply so that they have a place to rest on top. As I can see, I've got my underlay of my first floor turned on so I can see. So these will probably rest here, definitely will rest here, and probably we'll put some posts below here to carry it, some posts below here in the wall, and we'll put some posts below here to carry that weight and transfer it down. And then on the floor below, we're gonna to have to put some support there also. But that looks good to me. Now I'm gonna save it and I'm going to put my structural system in. This time I'll put it in in the other direction though. So structure, beam system. You can't see on the screen, but I can on my other screen. I do have the same settings, the real dimensional. I have dimensional number two by 10 and it's three quarters of an inch below the reference level. Uh, and uh, the spacing is one foot four or 16 inches. So I'll sketch and I'll draw. I want my 
system to go from here. Now, the first line that you put in defines the spacing or span. So you can see that my span is in the wrong direction now because that first line I put in is was side to side instead of front to back, which is okay. I'll be able to demonstrate how to change the spacing uh, or rather the, the span, okay? So uh, now if you take a look at it, you can see that I've defined where I want my floor joist to be, but this double line shows the uh, direction of the floor joist. And I want it to go in the other direction. So I'll come up to the ribbon and I'll say beam direction. And then I'll click on a line that's in the direction that I want my spacing or span to be. Now that double line went over here and I'll say, okay. And there's my floor system going in the other direction. And there we go. So I know that I'll need to go in and put some beams or columns, some sort of columns, even double up my two by four walls. So two by four studs underneath those points that I think are bearing points and over here as well. But that's it, that's my uh, bond. We put that in, then I came, put the bond in first so I know where my floor joists go to. And this, we'll let the structural engineer figure that out. And generally I put the strong tie uh, joist hangers all the way across there. Um, if you go to uh, their site, Simpson uh, site, they'll have the two by 10 joist hangers uh, and they're all direct, everything is correct. And by putting them in here, that's, that's a good uh, tornado or hurricane connection so that, uh, you know, it's a good solid connection to the, uh, to the bond. And this will all act as one membrane then as opposed to toenailing it, which isn't really a good connection. But the floor joist, the, the joist hangers are a good connection, required in some places, not required in others, uh, but I always put them in. Uh, they're a little difficult. I have a hard time figuring out how to rotate them and spin them around correctly, but definitely, definitely worth the effort <clears throat> and definitely worth the, the cost, whether they're required in the municipality where the project is going or not. Anyway, uh, we're in good shape here. Let's uh, 